Super Smash Brothers is the video game industry's most ambitious crossover. No, not you. Get, get out of here. Shoo. Shoo. As a kid who grew up on Melee, I always dreamed of seeing all my favorite Nintendo characters interact with one another. I'd create these little scenarios in my head of Mario and Pikachu teaming up to defeat Master Hand and establish a whole Nintendo cinematic universe in my own headcanon. At the time, it was nothing more than just a hopeless dream. But in March 2008, my world changed. On my 7th birthday, I got a Nintendo Wii, and along with it, the newly released Super Smash Bros. Brawl. My brother and I spent weeks versing each other, unlocking characters, playing home run contests, and getting comboed into oblivion by these stupid, fat, ugly, colorful motherfuck- Sorry about that, I uh, didn't have too much fun versing these guys. Anyways, eventually we cleared it all. We drenched Brawl of all of its content. Or so we thought. Subspace Emissary was perfect. My childhood dream of seeing all my favorite Nintendo characters team up actually became a reality. Looking back at it now, it wasn't perfect. Like, at all. But when you put it up against World of Light or <laughs> Smash Run, <laughs> Subspace did something that everything afterwards failed to accomplish. It had character. Say what you want about the repetitive gameplay or the shitty brawl engine, but these cutscenes are brilliant. Despite not having a single word of dialogue, Subspace still managed to create a better narrative than any Mario game to this date. And yes, I stand by my word. I think my favorite part about Subspace is the amount of unpredictable crossovers they throw at you. Samus and Pikachu, Pokemon Trainer and Lucas, Captain Falcon and fucking Olimar. If you knew nothing about Subspace and I showed you this image right here, you'd think it's Photoshop. Especially back in the late 2000s. You know, now that I think about it, Subspace's overall story is pretty basic but it's those subtle character interactions that make this little side story come to life. Let's take World of Light for example. I know we didn't get too many cutscenes, but here we have that first intro. What information can we gather? I mean, we got the whole Smash roster ready to fight a giant group of floating hands, some heroic looking characters say some heroic things, and they all die. Yeah, this cutscene is hype, but it feels like it just lacks any form of personality, and maybe if we got more cutscenes and footage in Ultimate, my thoughts would change, but we didn't, so this is all we have to work with. Taking a look back at subspace, let's check out this scene over here. Right before this, it was already established that Lucas was the scared, timid type, and Ness was the powerful, confident protagonist. Wario pops in out of nowhere and tries to snipe Ness, but I guess he's built different because he's able to dodge literal fucking bullets. So Wario takes his aim towards the weaker one of the two, and... Yeah, Nintendo just killed off the main character after like 5 minutes into meeting them. It's an emotional cutscene and it hit hard watching it for the first time, but this isn't the point I'm trying to get at. Throughout the story, Lucas meets Pokemon Trainer and goes on his own journey. He turns from a shy kid who can't even defend himself, into a confident character who saves his friend from death. In the end, Lucas triumphs over Wario and gets revenge for his brother. And although he still didn't save Ness, throughout his journey Lucas met new companions and learned important lessons. This is what we call a character arc. And it's not just Lucas. So many other characters in Subspace go through organic and heartfelt growth, and that's what makes it so memorable. Subspace isn't great because of who is in the roster. It's great because we actually get to see these characters interact with each other. I know it's kind of off topic, but that's my issue with Fortnite. Yeah, we have Darth Vader, Iron Man, Naruto, and fucking Rick in the same lobby, but they don't really interact with each other. It's all just cosmetics, and that's kind of how I feel about Smash Ultimate. Like, okay, cool, we have 80 different characters in the game, but other than the reveal trailers, they all kind of just... exist. Now, in no way am I shitting on Smash Ultimate... or Fortnite. All I'm saying is that Brawl did crossovers the way they're supposed to be done, and I'm yearning to see them do it again. Now, I could spend the whole video sucking off Brawl's cutscenes, but I'm sure you get the point by now. Let's redirect our attention towards the reason people don't like this game mode. It's gameplay. Now despite the incredible narrative Subspace presents, it's gameplay is... Questionable. Personally, I'm a huge fan of it. Imagine 2D Mario and Smash Bros had a baby and this is what we get. You platform your way to the end of the level like any other 2D platformer, but have to fight creatures using the skills you learn playing Smash. 
Every now and then, the game will mix it up by throwing some insane boss fight at you. PD Piranha, Ridley, Porky, and Rayquaza are only some of the menacing yet intriguing boss fights in this game. They also try to mix up the formula by throwing in some standard fights, versing characters like Shadow Bowser, Wario, Charizard, Giant Diddy Kong. Subspace Emissary always tries to mix up the formula. Keyword, tries. After the first few levels, it gets pretty repetitive. We're fighting the same unnamed enemies in the same unnamed locations. The gameplay loop turns into fight a group of fodder enemies and hold right until you find the next door. They do mix it up a bit by adding vertical based levels or auto scrollers, but I can't help but feel that it's still pretty repetitive. I don't mind that they made some smash original enemies, but they could have lightened up a little. Why can't we fight a Waddle Dee from Kirby or a Ball Board from Pikmin or even one of the hundreds of unused Pokemon? Instead, this is what we're given? Like, what the fuck is a Primid and why is it looking at me like that? Listen, all I'm saying is that for a Nintendo crossover, other than the characters and bosses, we really don't get a whole lot of Nintendo. Even the stages are just a generic forest or cave with a stock image background. Where's the Mushroom Kingdom? Where, where's Hyrule Castle? Subspace should have felt like worlds were colliding, rather than just the characters themselves. My last issue with the game is its final level, the Great Maze. If you don't know what this is, the Great Maze is basically one massive clusterfuck of a level. It brings back every stage, every enemy, every boss, every character together for one grand finale. Unfortunately, it falls short due to presenting nothing new to the game. At all. You basically play the entire story mode, but again, and this time you don't get the cutscenes. The Great Maze kind of makes me think that it was a last minute addition to add more content to the game. It doesn't really take anything away from the experience, but it doesn't add anything either. I think World of Light's grand finale was much better, and if we saw something like that instead of the Great Maze, I think people would be a lot happier. Other than that though, I think Subspace Emissary is near perfect. The progression feels deserved, and there's no better feeling than unlocking a new character. The boss fights are extremely creative, the gameplay is fun if you're looking for something casual, and we already talked about these beautifully rendered cutscenes. All in all, Subspace is a phenomenal Smash Brothers experience. So what would I change if we got a sequel in Smash 6? Obviously, the most important part is the cutscenes. Just like the original, I'd want to see these obscure characters teaming up with one another. I'm talking Inkling and Wii Fit Trainer, Isabella and Sephiroth. Imagine seeing Mewtwo and Minecraft Steve band together to take down Bayonetta or something. We don't need dialogue, but seeing how they threw it in World of Light, I'm sure they can make it work. I'm not worried about the quality of the animations themselves, because Nintendo clearly knows how to make some stellar cutscenes. In terms of the story, I, I, I don't know, read the Smash fanfic or something. But I strongly believe whatever story mode we get needs cutscenes. There's a reason Subspace is still being talked about 15 years later, despite the gameplay being mediocre at best. The gameplay, in my opinion, should be a mix of World of Light and Subspace. Make each level feel different by adding certain buffs and nerfs like how Spirits did, yet still keeping that 2D platform style. Let's say we're escaping Bowser's castle or something, maybe the whole level will have some meteors falling from the sky as an ongoing hazard, or what if in a cutscene our character gets injured so we start off the level with more damage? I think simple changes like this will keep the game fresh and give the cutscenes more of a significance to the gameplay. The boss fights were perfect in my opinion, simple and straight to the point, yet each battle felt different. I don't think anything needs to be changed here, so I'm just going to name some old and new bosses I'd want to see in Smash 6. Rayquaza, Porky, Giga Bowser, Calamity Ganon, Mark's Master and Crazy Hand, Taboo, The Ender Dragon, The Man at Legs, Ultima Crozona, Dracula, and not Galeem. Seriously, this thing has no personality. In terms of enemies, they all function great. I just want to see less of this. And the level design needs to be better. I already mentioned this before, but no one wants to explore these unnamed places. It would be so much cooler if we're hopping from one universe to another. One minute we're on top of Mount Cornet fighting Giratina and the next we're in Dracula's castle. Nintendo has so many interesting and unique IPs, I'd love to see them all used at their fullest potential. And last but not least, the biggest change I'd make to Subspace 2 is making a 4 player. This might be in the nostalgia talking, but a lot of the joy I had playing Subspace was going through the levels with my brother. Had I played it alone, I probably wouldn't have loved it as much as I do now. I think 8 players is a little overwhelming, but having a 4 player Smash Bros campaign would be perfect. Unfortunately, this is all just wishful thinking. We probably won't get another Subspace 2, and some people don't even think we'll get a Smash 6. But regardless of what the future holds in store for us, let's take a moment to appreciate the masterpiece that was Brawl's Subspace. I don't know if we'll get another one of these, and even if we don't, I'm glad I got to experience this when I did. 
for now, all we can do is hope.